In the previous video about Hansacre, I spoke about the technical and design challenges of Rishi Sunak's decision to win HS2 between Litchfield and Rugeley, instead of Crewe or Manchester. But beyond the engineering implications of terminating HS2 at Hansacre, his decision will have a huge impact on the future of West Coast mainline services and capacity. The main justification for HS2 has always been about capacity, no matter what opponents say, and that hasn't changed. What will change, however, is the amount of capacity that will be released. It is still the case that HS2 will free up capacity on the West Coast mainline south of Rugby for improved local and regional connectivity, as well as providing capacity for commuters travelling south of Milton Keynes into London. HS2 Phase 1 should also provide between 1 and 2 paths per hour in each direction during the day for freight services between the South East and West Midlands, with the potential to remove thousands of truck journeys from the road network each day. Where Sunak's decision has the biggest impact is north of Litchfield, which could impact existing Trent Valley services stopping at Rugeley, Litchfield and Tamworth and if the junction at Hansacre isn't reverted back to the original design, could in fact reduce capacity for freight to and from the north. If you haven't already, I'd encourage you to watch the previous video to see what I mean in more detail about the previous and current designs for Hansacre Junction. At present, no one at the DFT or HS2 Limited knows what the implications will be, or if at the very least funding will be provided for a better option for Hansacre. But for this video, we will assume that sense has prevailed, at Hansacre at least, and the more efficient junction is constructed. If the fast line junction is constructed, then Professor McNaughton has stated that the junction was designed to accommodate up to 7 HS2 services per hour. But just to throw a spanner in the works, he has also stated that if HS2 does not go to London Euston, then Aldo Common, working as a terminus, could only reliably accommodate 6 trains per hour. So for this video, we must also assume HS2 is built to Euston, otherwise the Birmingham service alone would consume half that capacity with unexpected 3 trains per hour. If HS2 is to provide the service frequency promised by Phase 2A, then there should be at least 6 services per hour from the north. 3 from Manchester, 2 from Liverpool and a service from Glasgow, with services calling at various intermediate stations between those cities and Hansacre. So, the minimum service level we should expect to see using the core section of HS2 is 9 trains per hour. This seems straightforward enough, assuming HS2 is built to Euston and the more efficient junction is constructed at Hansacre. But if HS2 is not built to Euston, then we could see Liverpool, Manchester and Glasgow each being served by just one HS2 service per hour, unless the DFT tries to push the limits of the number of services that can be reliably terminated at Old Oak Common. I admit this is just speculation, but it does give us the best and worst case scenarios, which will have varying impacts on the West Coast mainline. If we assume for the moment that current services from Manchester, Liverpool and Glasgow will be replaced by HS2 services, with the best case scenario for HS2, that still leaves some big unknowns. Such as, will Manchester only be served by HS2 services to London, or could the proposed additional Classic service be accommodated? Classic services being those currently provided by Avanti. Providing both HS2 and Classic services is important, as the whole idea with HS2 was that some existing services would continue to operate, which would continue to provide connectivity from the north to places such as Rugby and Milton Keynes, whilst providing more seats for West Coast mainline stations not served directly by HS2 services. Connecting the north with Milton Keynes is not only important because it's the largest settlement in Buckinghamshire with a population of almost 290,000 and has head offices for several large national and international companies, but once east-west rail opens between Bicester and Milton Keynes will provide improved links to Oxford. East-west rail could potentially cut the journey time from Manchester to Oxford from 2 hours 50 minutes currently to 2 hours 30 minutes, travelling via the West Coast Main Line and East-west rail. Admittedly, that isn't a huge time saving, but could provide a viable and some may argue welcome alternative to travelling direct to Oxford with cross-country. But this example isn't really about Manchester to Oxford journeys, but demonstrates the sort of regional connectivity that HS2 was supposed to improve. 
but without phase 2A, it's not clear if any classic services will be able to continue. With questions about whether or not the popular London Northwestern Railway service from Crewe to Euston serving Trent Valley stations could continue to operate. The best case scenario for 6 trains per hour using Hansacre may not seem significant, but the West Coast mainline between College and Manchester is already constrained. Not least because College Junction is a flat at grade junction which introduced conflicts between trains travelling from Stafford and those joining the West Coast Main Line from the Stone to College Line. Whether or not Sunak's decision will mean further upgrades on the West Coast Main Line will be required is another unknown. But I'm sure many people will remember the disruption passengers had to endure for almost a decade at the beginning of the 2000s during the last West Coast Main Line route modernisation programme. Many commentators already seem to be suggesting that we should expect something like that again between Hansacre and Manchester or even as far north as Wigan. Let's not forget the Goldbourne link which was axed that would have provided relief on the congested section between Warrington and Wigan and that would have provided Glasgow and Edinburgh with additional services as well as slashing the journey from Scotland to Euston by an hour. In terms of capacity, it's more important to provide more paths so that more trains can operate, and that's what HS2 would have achieved. But in addition, HS2 would have provided a huge uplift in seating capacity. However, Sunak's decision will have a huge impact on the seating capacity north of Birmingham. The 54 200 meter long units that the DFT have ordered have a stated capacity of 550 seats. Not an issue with Birmingham Curzon Street and the proposed new platforms at Manchester Piccadilly able to accommodate trains working in multiple with a length of 400 metres and a seating capacity of 1,100 seats. But with HS2 ending at Hansacre and the new platforms at Piccadilly scrapped, then trains will be limited to working individually, so at present limited to 200 metres. If this was to be the case, assuming three HS2 services per hour to Manchester would actually lead to a reduction in seating capacity compared to the capacity of the 265 meter long Pendolinos which have a capacity of 589. The simple answer would be to renegotiate the order and opt for 250 meter long sets which would have a capacity of around 690. But if, and that's a big if, the DFT opts for longer sets, that would still only provide a marginal gain compared to what would have been provided by Phase 2. The story is the same for Glasgow, which with Phase 2 and Goldbourne would have benefited from two 200 meter long trains per hour, but with the current plan would only see one 200 meter long train per hour, leading to a reduction in seating capacity. The situation with Liverpool is a little bit more complicated, as with HS2 it was proposed that the service would be increased to 2 trains per hour, but Avanti had already said it would introduce an additional service calling at Liverpool South Parkway utilising the shorter new class 807s that Avanti had ordered. But the last I heard was that the introduction of this service seems to be in doubt. Two 550 seat trains per hour would provide an overall increase in capacity compared with today and arguably should be ample for Liverpool. But the question is, would this be instead of the proposed Avanti service calling at Liverpool South Parkway which would actually be quite useful. So not only do we not know if HS2 will require major design changes at Hansacre or if Euston will even be constructed, but it's not known if the DFT will modify the rolling stock order, so at the very least there is no drop in overall seating capacity. To me the entire situation seems a complete mess and it's clear that the Prime Minister had no grasp whatsoever of what the implications would be of indefinitely terminating HS2 at Hansacre.